our greatest misfortune that some of the big powers in the region are not seeing eye to eye with each other. What had happened that Sri Lanka had to face such a worst sort of financial crisis. There are three reasons probably. Bad fiscal management over a period of time, bad luck and bad policies. Today, Sri Lanka's Foreign Minister Ali Sabri is here with us in Dhaka. We're going to talk about Sri Lanka's economic crisis, why it happened, and what is the consequence. We're also going to talk about the relationship between Bangladesh and Sri Lanka and beyond. Thank you, Minister, for agreeing to this uh, interview and uh, thank you for coming to Bangladesh. What is the status of your economy now because you went to the IMF, you started tourism. Are the things, you know, normal now? Thank you very much for having me. It's a great pleasure uh, to talk to uh, the uh, Bangladeshi friends. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that we are totally out of woods. There's a long, long way to go. But if you look back six months, you know, in, Ju in May, uh, March, we had long hours of power cut six, seven, eight, nine hours of power cut, which had now reduced to one or two hours. We had three, four days of full queues. Now there are no full queues. We have introduced a systematic QR code that has been eliminated. We don't have cooking or gas. Uh, people are not in the street other than politically motivated few. So generally things have helped a lot. Tourists have started to come uh, and huge big ships uh, usually come to Colombo, Colombo is one of the cleanest and most uh, connected ports in the area. Last week there, were, uh, there was a ship with 1,000 tourists coming in. So many ships are lined up to come. So many new airlines are flying, including um, one of the airlines from your country. So there is a lot of potential here. Lot of potential here, people see that and investors have started to come. But um, the real challenge for us is to quickly go to the IMF board and get the extended fund facility, which we call an EFF, a bailout. Uh, in order to do that, we need to get assurances from our creditors. So we are in the process of discussing with our biggest creditors, uh, China, India, Paris Club, and Japan. So we are hopeful that we should get the debt assurances sooner than later. And once that gets, once the IMF comes in, probably the credibility and confidence in the system, financial system will return. World Bank has uh, agreed to help, ADB has agreed to help, uh, many others like JICA and all are waiting what is happening here. So it's very, very important that we clinch the deal with the IMF that is central for our recovery. We know, uh, you know, Sri Lanka as a model, regional model in terms of uh, education, uh, health system and even uh, migration policy because both of these countries are you know migrant sending countries so we learn a lot from Sri Lanka what has actually happened or what had happened that Sri Lanka had to face such a worst sort of financial crisis was it uh, external issue or the domestic politics or what actually if you ask me that question there are three reasons probably bad fiscal management over a period of time, bad luck and bad policies. Bad luck in the sense uh, the 2018 Easter Sunday attack did not help us. That really uh, hit our tourism industry and shake um, our confidence. And then came the COVID and when you're about to get out of COVID, then came, of course, the Ukrainian crisis with that the escalation of prices. So combination of all those things had uh, led us uh, to this crisis which uh, was beyond uh, comprehension for us also. So a number of cabinet members uh, also had to resign and uh, there were huge public protests and uh, things like that. Uh, you know, people were saying that uh, there was political chronism and uh, these also contributed to the uh, uh, problem. 
Yeah, people give various uh, interpretations, of course, opposition for the sake of opposing will oppose anything and everything. But actually, there were some bad decisions made. Uh, for example, immediately after the after in 2019 elections, we reduced the taxation, which made 14% uh, of Sri Lankan GDP as taxes to come down to 8.3%. So no country with 8.3% of uh, taxation from the GDP can survive unless, of course, you have a huge export market or natural resources side the Middle Eastern countries. So if you look at U UK, 33% of their, their GDP uh, uh, comes as taxes. So 8.3% is unthinkable. So that was a mistake. And then we overnight went for, uh, for example, uh, the organic uh, fertilizer uh, without having a proper comprehensive plan. And then that made a, a huge impact on our agriculture. 33% of our population are employed in agriculture sector. So similarly, um, we would have known earlier to go to IMF and start negotiating when our debts were not unsubstantial, uh, unsustainable. So Bangladesh had have already learned from that. I, I thought Bangladesh had started going and talking to uh, IMF long before debts have become unsustainable, then it is easy to discuss. And for us, it has become a very cumbersome process because we have to get debt assurances uh, from various of our creditors. So I think already there are lessons to learn. And I agree, there were uh, popular decisions which were made over a period of time. These popular decisions uh, cannot sustain for a long period of time. So this is a good lesson for everybody on the ground or all the countries that uh, welfare state, if not supported by a revenue stream, will not survive for a long. You know, there are also some external factors that, uh, you know, many experts talk about. For example, uh, the very expensive projects, including uh, the Chinese-supported Hambantota uh, port, which is not actually bringing any return or revenue. So, I mean, is that an issue? Not everything, I and mean, some of the things would have been put for more productive processes. But if you look at our highways, um, generating a lot of money, and it have uh, uh, made Sri Lanka competitive. It have um, brought Sri Lanka smaller. And then, uh, for example, uh, Chinese invested on a coal power plant, uh, which gives our 35 percent of our our electricity, which has already covered its cost in 10 years of operation. So there are some, we have put it into very productive use. Some of those things could have been put into a more productive use. Mm -hmm. So I thought we were little complacent post um, uh, uh, LTT, uh, the end of LTT conflict. Uh, we thought uh, this is going to be forever. Like the tech company thought that, uh, like every every tech companies in the in the Western states are reducing their uh, the, uh, the the workforce now. That is because they thought during the pandemic there was an upsurge of tech usage. They thought this right. is going to be the no norm. But now they are coming back to the reality. Then mm -hmm. they know that they have expanded on false promise. So similarly, I thought uh, we would have better managed our macroeconomic picture. Do you think that uh, uh, Bangladesh can learn from the mistakes that you made in your country and do not repeat it in uh, Bangladesh? Because we always learn from each other. Of course, I, I think many countries can learn. Sri Lanka itself can learn, not to mistake it, and many other countries in the region. Probably if you look at in Sri Lanka, there are a few mistakes which we have made. Uh, one is, of course, we have achieved great heights in free education, free health, uh, uh, and tourism infrastructure, infrastructure development, uh, and all those indicators are very, very high, and, and that's, we are proud of that. But unfortunately, what happened was uh, there was lack of fiscal management. In terms of that, uh, what happened, some of the monies which we have taken, whether it has been put into uh, practice or, 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 or into investment where there is a return, was an issue and we were too much dependent on tourism. Tourism is very seasonal and very risky. So when the tourism hit us once, two, three years or continuously, we started losing money. So a lot to learn and then we have an oversized public service with 1.5 million Sri Lankans are in the public service. For That means every 14 Sri Lankans have one public servant. So therefore, several areas to learn and mm -hmm. some of our 
uh, uh, SOEs, that's a state-owned enterprises uh, um, actually bleeding. Uh, for example, until recently, uh, the, the, we did not have a, a mechanism to price fuel on costing. We subsidized it. So when you subsidize uh, fuel, when you subsidize electricity, when you subsidize uh, um, water, I mean somebody has to pay. So there is a lot to learn probably because there is nothing called a free meal. So if you are getting a free meal, uh, there is some hidden cost and that exactly is what we are paying right now. Uh, so we will learn and hopefully Sri Lankan is a very resilient nation, will come back uh, stronger. Let's come back to uh, Bangladesh-Sri uh, Lanka relationship. Uh, just last year, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka celebrated 50 years of its uh, diplomatic relationship. Uh, so how have these uh, 50 years uh, been and uh, what are the prospects where we can really collaborate and cooperate? So Bangladesh is a close friend of Sri Lanka for a long, long period of time. 50 years is, I think uh, your country is also 50 years. That is because we were one of the first to recognize and we were very close friends for a long, long period of time. And Sri Lanka and Bangladesh's policies more or less are the same. We are friends to all, enemy to none. And we, are, uh, we don't have conflict with uh, many of our neighbors. And we are non-aligned movement members. So accordingly, we have a good relationship. And over a period of time, this relationship has grown socio-economic, political, as well as um, a lot of support in multilateral flora and economic and maritime. So, six, 55 to 60 percent of your, your garment trade goes through our ports mm -hmm. and there is a lot of potential people to people contact. So, I think we have grown well, uh, but we have huge potential in terms of tourism, in terms of investment, in terms of people-to-people -people contact, in terms of maritime and air connectivity. So we are working very hard on that. And already Sri Lankan firms are, I think, the third biggest investor in this country with uh, almost close to three billion worth of investment. So therefore, it has been very good and we will continue to grow. Uh, I'm sure uh, the future is even brighter. So far I know that Bangladesh has uh, sought uh, to start a direct shipping uh, you know, service between Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Yes. Uh, so is there any progress? Yeah, of course yeah, there is. I, I think last week uh, a high level delegation from our Sri Lanka Ports Authority came here. And I today met your uh, State Minister, Honorable State Minister of Ports and we had discussions, we'll follow up. I just met your foreign minister where uh, His Excellency on his own was suggesting that we should introduce a cruise from Chittagong to uh, Male and Colombo. So these are huge potential and of course uh, good news is one of your uh, private uh, air career will start flying to Colombo and one of our careers also will fly. So then uh, more, more, more flight means more connectivity. So there are a lot of opportunity for us so I am sure. Um, on those lines, we can strengthen our relationship. We live in the in the Pacific region, uh, so in recent years, this region has become actually a place of great power competition. So, you know that it is becoming difficult for the small and medium states to deal with the big powers. So, how can Sri Lanka and Bangladesh and other countries uh, work together? so we can better handle the situation? Uh, very important questions because uh, no one can tell us to take sides and choose a side. So we want to work with everybody and anybody. So therefore, um, while we understand the concerns of our neighbors, our, our, our uh, competitors, we also need to work with everyone. So small countries like Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, medium-sized economies like us uh, must work together and come out with a, a stronger policy where, as you say, the, the freedom of navigation in the Indian Ocean, this is an ocean of opportunities for all, uh, should be exploited. So no one, is, uh, uh, no one is prevented from taking the full use of it. And more than that, it's also important that uh, everyone must understand. Every country must have the freedom and the right to choose. Uh, as long as it is legitimate. So, uh, to, to that extent, I think we need to work together. And we also have to uh, 
work as multilateral forums like IORA, like BIMSTEC uh, to strengthen those things so that uh, countries are not bullied or sidelined or forced to take sides and and that's one side of it. The other side of it is everyone needs to understand in a complex globalized world you can't isolate anyone. Everyone is necessary and everything is necessary and therefore we need to work as a team, we need to make, work as actually citizens of the globe. So you talked about IORA, uh, Beamstack, we so far know that you know that uh, SARC has been a uh, very old you know, regional organization uh, here but it's not actually working, not effective now and Beamstack it is not uh, working as expected. Uh, IORA it is still in the you know some uh, concept level work is going on so you're not really seeing regional big initiatives which are in practice so is there any obstacle which is actually preventing us from taking uh, joint effort yeah i think so uh, unfortunately i agree with you uh, if you look at one the people must understand one thing when you develop it is the region which develops. It is the European Union and the Europe region which develops, right? It is the North America as a region which develops. It is the entire Middle East which has developed. It is the East Asia which has developed. But South Asia with so much of potential, so much of people, such a huge ocean, we are not reaping our benefit because unfortunately within this South Asian contingent, we are not working uh, as a team, you know. So when you work as a team, you need to give and take. You need to trust. There will always be differences, but there is, there are also so much of similarities. So why don't we work on those similarities instead of only concentrating on the differences? So that is how most of the world countries have worked on the world. So therefore, it is our greatest misfortune that some of the big powers in the region are not seeing eye to eye with each other and that has affected all of us. So therefore, it's my hope that we must sit, discuss and find out as to why SARC has not worked, why Beamstech has not taken off, like many other organizations in the other parts of it. Otherwise, what will happen is we will be forced to take other options which is available outside our region. So that's not good for all of us. So uh, reasons are obvious, uh, we all know that. I think it is time that we forget about uh, the things which we can't agree. So let's put that to a side, but there are numerous issues we can agree. Let's sit and agree on that and start working towards it. So otherwise, uh, I know I'm, I'm equally worried like you, uh, what is the future of our organization? So we who's to build a cat? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the big players need to build the cat. You know, it's, uh, we, we need to understand that. I hope uh, uh, India and Pakistan will sit and discuss, resolve issues and come to common table and restart uh, SAC uh, in a very pragmatic manner. So that's the only way. Do you think this uh, coming together is more important than ever? Yes, I think so because uh, nothing is... Uh, more desired for the humanity than peace. Peace provides so much of dividends and those dividends are unimaginable. If you, sometimes what you happens is you, you are very comfortable of what you achieve, but you really don't understand what is the real potential of it. So have we reached that potential? I don't think so. As South Asia, if China could reach and take 850 million out of poverty, Anything and everything is possible. Whether we like it or not, the 21st century's miracle is China. They have taken 850 million people out of poverty. Human, it's almost one-fifth of the humanity out of poverty. You know, and your country has done great for the last 14 years or so, 32 million people have been taken out of poverty. These are small miracles. So I think that's possible and imagine if you can really do that and replicate in our region of about 
1.67 billion people. Uh, I mean, it's good to the world, good to the region. Uh, so, my hope and pr my, my only hope that uh, we will one day realize the true potential of our people in the region. Minister uh, Ali Sabri, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.